Welcome back. It's story time again. Time stamps in the description box. Story number one. Opie writes, My story is probably the opposite of anyone here, but for me it made sense, even though it doesn't for my husband and the rest of the family. I needed to write somewhere to see if there is anybody out there who understands me, or am I, as anyone around me believes, going mental? I found this from a YouTuber. My husband cheated on me five years ago on a work trip. His colleague sent me the sex tape she made. Apparently, they slept together. She used the tape to get him to start a relationship with her, and when he refused, she exposed him to me. I was in utter shock. This just couldn't happen to us. How could he do this to me when he said he loved me so much? I couldn't take the images out of my head. I was broken and paralyzed. I think because while the normal reaction should have been yell and shout and leave him, I just went into a depression and was too weak to take action. He asked for marriage counseling, and for two years I lived in this depressed trance, and I honestly don't remember thinking of anything but my husband and his affair, seeing the images she sent me whenever I closed my eyes. After a few months, and with a therapist's recommendation, he tried to get intimate with me, but it just triggered my PTSD. I was so embarrassed to give him my body when it wasn't good enough for him. I felt so disgusting and ugly, and him touching me was so, so shameful. Like, why would he want something that wasn't enough, something so disgusting? He tried to make me believe that I was beautiful and more than enough, and that it was him, not me, and it was never about me not being enough. But for me, it was all lies and a bunch of gibberish. I knew for a fact I was disgusting and I had proof. My husband's cheating. After two years, things were getting brighter. The nightmares and images started fading and individual and couples therapy did miracles. I started to love myself again. And sometimes it went days without me thinking of my husband's affair. We started having sex again after three years. And while the image of him with her was always there, I thought that I just had to live with it. Here is where I might be weird. Now, five years later, I'm fully happy, feel that I have gained back the control over my life, and I put that whole ordeal behind me. At the same time now, I feel that my marriage is over. My husband is in total disarray. Why now, when we are finally happy again, when I'm back to my old self, and finally over what he did? I even forgave him. I did. But I don't understand his confusion. For me, now I'm happy and strong again. I feel I want more from myself, my life, and from the man I share my life with. I couldn't leave when I was too weak to think properly and without bias. I couldn't leave when I didn't have a free will, consumed by grief. Why can't he see that it was a healthy way of thinking, not making decisions while hurting? Am I wrong? I am 35 now. I want to start a family. I want to start this family with someone who would never have done this to me. Doesn't this make sense? And here's OP's update. Hi everyone. I will make my update short, but I felt that I have to since you asked for an update. Thank you so much for the support. Not going to lie. These past couple of days have been very emotional for me. I don't know, but just putting my story out there and receiving all the support did a number on me. I showed my husband this post and the comments and I showed him the many drafts I made that were longer with more details about what I went through that I didn't feel were necessary to include. He cried the whole time he was reading, especially the comments from the men and women who went through the same experience. He said he always knew how wrong he did me, and that never a day went by without him thinking about how he hurt me for nothing. Now, when he read how long it really took me to heal, five years of my life, because of one hour of pointless sex, he apologized and said that he couldn't give me back what he took, but that he won't stand in the way of my happiness. He promised me an amicable divorce. He said he will always love me. He just requested to celebrate one last Christmas together. He is moving out after. Well, OP, you said that you are your old self again, but clearly you're not your old self. This experience has really changed you. 
And you say you're stronger gang. I think you're a stronger than you were back then. You gave it five years and you haven't been able to really heal from this. I know you say you're pretty much over it, but there's still that residue, still that pain that is there. And as long as you're with your husband, it's not going to go away. I think that is what you realize and you don't want to waste any more time. And what a good point you make, Opie, when you said that it took you five years of your life to heal from something your husband did for one hour. That is really something for people to take in because there are people out there that cheat and they don't understand the repercussions. And it's not a case that you didn't want to get over it. You forgave him. You went to therapy. You wanted to get over this. You wanted to move on with your life with your husband. But unfortunately, that wound is just too deep. So I get it. I understand why you've made this decision now to get a divorce and move on. Opie, you've discovered your self-worth through this ordeal and that's why you want more for yourself and more from the man you share your life with. Get back out there when you're ready, Opie, and go find your happiness. You deserve it. Let's move on to story number two. Opie writes, Hey everyone, throw away to find out if I'm overreacting. I, 36 male, have been married for six years to my husband, 29 male. For most of the time we have been together, we have not had our own friends that we do things with without the other. We have friends as a couple, but not friends that the other has never met. Recently, my husband has decided he needs his own friends. He chose Tinder as the place to meet other guys. He claims that he only wants friends. Because he is meeting people on Tinder makes me feel like he wants something more, even though he denies it every time I bring it up. What concerns me is that he cheated just before our wedding. I promised to forgive him and I did. However, the fear of him doing it again bothers me. I would be fine with him hooking up with another guy, but I would want to know about it first. I'm not against an open marriage, but communication is everything with me. He has met a guy that lives almost two hours away and will spend all day with him at least one weekend day every week, leaving our house at 8am and coming home almost midnight. We also have one car, so I am now effectively stranded and sacrificing an entire day at home. Any and all advice is appreciated. Let's get a comment with a reply from OP and then we get OP's update. LOL, married people, people in general, don't go on Tinder to make buddies. I think you already know what this is. If you're looking for a confession, you'll be waiting for a long time. But that doesn't make what he's doing any less obvious. My husband chilling with someone else they met on Tinder just is incomprehensible. If their buddies tag along. Opie replies, I agree. He says we need time apart, which I can agree with. But I'd feel better if I at least got to meet the guy once. But he says that would defeat the purpose of being apart. I offered to drop him off sometime and see the guy for max of a minute or two. Not an option. No compromises. And here's Opie's update. So after many hard conversations and emotions on my side, we finally made a plan for our future. We are going to live as roommates, at least for a couple of months. The love we once had for each other is no longer there. The trust is broken or was never fully restored. I'm convinced that he's not cheating with his friend, but ultimately the issues we are having go far deeper than I imagined. I was too blind to see those, and he really would speak about his feelings. I'm hopeful that the spark will reignite, and we will be able to try being husbands again soon. But I know this is not realistic. If not, life will go on. The future I saw for myself and for us is now gone. Feels like I'm looking at a clean slate and I don't particularly like that picture. I want to see us together and happy again. Moving on from that will not be difficult. Really wish this wasn't happening so close to the holidays. I'm going to focus on being as supportive as I can be and try to be the best friend to him. I don't know what else to do. I would love any comments from anyone else who has become roommates with their spouse and was able to work it out. I really appreciate everyone's comments. OP, I think instead of focusing on being as supportive as you can be of him, maybe focus on yourself and what makes you happy. 
I get the impression that a lot of this relationship has been about him and what he wants and what makes him happy. So, Opie, honestly, I'll say it again, focus on yourself. And it is very strange. You said you believe him. He's not having a relationship, an affair with his friend. But why doesn't he want to introduce you to the friend? Maybe the friend doesn't even know that you exist. Because it's just odd that he won't say, okay, it's, it's fine, a minute, let, let me just introduce the two of you and then we go our way and I'll see you again tomorrow or later in, in the evening, whatever. So I do feel that your spouse is hiding things from you and I can see that you want things to work out and everything to be perfect. Like you said, there's deeper problems here and I do feel it's more to do with your spouse than with you. It's maybe codependency that's popped up here in this relationship. I don't know. But I do know, Opie, if you don't learn to put yourself first, he is never going to put you first either. And nobody else will, quite frankly. And yes, it is very hard going into the holidays and being single, being alone. But you can also look at it as an opportunity to do new things, meet new people. I think if you have a plan for anybody going into the holidays, newly single, if you have some kind of a plan of what you're going to do, it will make it a bit easier. And you might even surprise yourself and end up really enjoying yourself. But I know it's hard, I'm not being flippant, but do try to go into the holidays with a plan. Well, that's it for this edition. Thank you once again for listening. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing, leave a comment. And I'll see you again next time with more stories. Take care of yourself, everyone. Bye.